Okay, gang. Well, it's time for another workout. It's a uh, Tuesday, so that means handstand day. Neuro said handstand day. Handstands and overhead pressing motions have always been the bane of my existence. Very weak in this motion, so I've got to seriously regress these movements, but especially going with the smooth, slow motion that you see here. So I'm using this trigger point block. It's basically a yoga block as a range of motion limiter. I'm getting very slow, very uh, tight contractions in my shoulders, my back. I'm trying to put more emphasis in my traps and my triceps. Uh, I find that the, the handstands in general tend to be one of the best triceps movers or exercises there is. For the explosive set, I've got kind of like this incline style push-up that uh, I know you don't find this too much in the convict conditioning method, but I like this because I can do it under control. It doesn't require a lot of balance trying to just simply bring my arms through a big range of motion as if I was pressing overhead. Works pretty well. You can see the triceps are working as well. And even though it doesn't look terribly fast, I'm trying to do this as quickly as possible. I'm also keeping my knees bent, as you can see, because my hamstrings are not very flexible. And even though they have been getting more flexible, they're not good enough for the full straight downward dog. Then holding the isometric into the classic handstand, I'm fighting it. As much as I can, you can see I'm starting to come down. I just can't hold myself up very long. Coming on down, and again, I'm not editing this at all because I want you to see just how long my actual work uh, building muscle sets are in my workout because my actual muscle building workouts are not very long. I've gotten a couple of questions in the past uh, video about what do I do for warm up? What do I do for cool down? And the honest answer is I really don't warm up these days. I don't do much of a warm up. I don't do really any cool down. The stuff that you see me doing here, just holding poses, rubbing on muscles, keeping uh, things loose. I do this kind of thing like all day. And I'm starting to get to the point where I really do believe that you should be able to take your body and be pretty capable of doing most anything right at the drop of a hat. Uh, maybe with the exception if you were like woke up at 3 a.m., I wouldn't expect you to just jump into a sprint or whatnot. But for the most part, if you're doing an exercise, if you're mildly active throughout the day, you shouldn't need to do a very long warm up. Your body should be ready to go at a moment's notice. So, anyway, we've got set number two here, trying to grind out. By the way, you can't really see it, but I'm trying to squeeze my elbows together as much as I possibly can trying to get my elbows pointed forward. And I know it doesn't look like it here, but it sure as hell feels like those elbows are not splaying to the side. I know a lot of times when we do overhead presses and handstands, the temptation is for the elbows to splay outwards. You can see they're kind of splaying outwards here as well. I'm trying to do that as little as possible. Ideally with this, my forearms should be rubbing against my rib cage, both as I come down and as I go up. I'm also trying not to do what I call tenting with my hands, where all the weight of on my hand goes to the outside of my hand. I'm trying to keep it right in the middle of the hand or even slightly to the inside because squeezing inwards towards your center line is the key. You can see here, I'm just not getting up. I'm not able to get up into the handstand. My shoulders are so tired, my back is tired, and I'm starting to think, okay, what do I do? And this is, to me, evidence. A lot of people will say, yeah, but handstand work, balance work, that's quote, skill work. That's not about building muscle or building strength. Here's the, the thing I've learned from all of this is that there's no such thing as different kinds of muscle tension. There's different kinds of neural activity, but as far as your muscles are concerned, tension is tension, regardless of what you're doing. And if you're lacking the ability to hold tension for a skill, that's the same exact thing as lacking the tension to lift a heavier weight. So you see me struggling with that handstand, that's no different than if I tried to lift up a weight and I couldn't lift it. My muscles, it, as far as my muscle tension is concerned, it's the exact same thing. So skill, balance, all that sort of stuff, that is very much a component of building muscle and strength. And that's why the CC Plus program is about build your skills because that is going to help you build muscle. I know people like to say, no, skill building is different than building strength and muscle. Especially in the calisthenics world, they are one and the same. You can't have one without the other, which is why CC Plus is about building both because if you've got one without the other, you'll always hold yourself back, either in the skill department or the strength department. So once again, I'm resting for about a minute or so. I got my laptop off to the side there, still using the online stopwatch. 
and uh, trying this again. Okay, here we go. There, there we are. And then set three, a little bit more of a rest, capable of doing some more presses. Again, the handstands, not my best move, never has been. And the thing I'm really working on here is squeezing the floor together, trying to keep my traps tight as possible. Again, I'm a big fan of the idea of find ways to make the exercise harder. Brad, um, what is it, Mike Menser, I think, the bodybuilder, uh, said in the quote in the Neuromass book, Something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's something like anytime you find a way to make your exercise harder, you're on the right track. And that's what I've always kind of had for the mentality, especially with calisthenics, is find technical ways to make the exercise harder. For me, things like adding weight to an exercise is not an asset. That's a liability. Anytime you can make an exercise harder so you don't need to add weight, you're on the right path. And when you're saying, okay, I'm just going to add weight, I'm going to add reps, chances are you may be making the exercise actually easier. Not always, but just something to be aware of. So for my isometric, I got the frog stand here because I'm not going up on that wall. I'm just too tired and I come back on down and that's it. So that's my handstand workout. Preliminaries here, uh, I've decided to work on my shifting exercises this, this uh, today. Uh, not this week, but today. So this is shift to the side, kick out the leg, and stand into the pistol squat. Little bit of a wobble there. Shift, bring the other leg around, and up. I like this kind of move. It's a good way to get into the pistol squat progression. It gives you a good way to really learn how to shift your weight from one side to the other because ultimately, especially with body weight training, a lot of people find it difficult to do the lateral exercises because they don't understand really how to shift their weight and from one limb to the other and have the control and pull, excuse me, pull towards the center line. So it's a good way to do this. We can do this with push-ups too. Come down, shift the weight to the side, hand is underneath the chest. As a side note here, I'm really finding that the standard method of push-ups, at least for me now, is to always do them with some sort of hand under the chest. Not to the side of the chest, not out to the side or anything, but I'm really starting to believe that once you've got the technique dialed in, the standard way to do push-ups should be hands under you, not to the side of you. Because ultimately, if you're trying to move an object, you want to have force uh, under the object or directly against the object. When the hands are to the side or uh, slightly to the outside, then it creates a lot more torque, tension, stress on the joints, and so forth. So just shifting side to side there, coming back up, kind of like a box. Can do the same thing with pull-ups, and again, trying to get my hand closer to my center line so that I'm pulling against the center line. I'm not having my arm out to the side and trying to do these progressive pull-ups. Going from one side to the next, using the bicep, also trying to use the back as much as possible. The old saying goes, when it comes with people with, um, with pull-ups, you either got big lats or you got big biceps because you do one, you focus attention in one area, but not the other. So try and make it as even as possible. Leg raises, I decided to do these slow eccentrics on the decline bench here. Very, very slow. Kind of a dragon flag introductory set kind of deal. Used to do a couple of dragon flag like movements to this, but uh, it's been quite a while. So I'm just doing some slow eccentrics. I've got my leg raises in a couple of days, so I'm not putting too much emphasis there. Then I got the straight leg uh, bridges or a, a, the reverse planks, and I'm shifting my weight by simply switching my legs from one to the other, trying to keep most of my tension in my hamstrings and in my glutes, calves as well, to a large degree. I don't, don't have quite as much extension in the back as I'd like, but you know what? There's always room for improvement. So there you go. There's my workout for Tuesday. Let me know if you have questions down below. Be fit, live free.